Well, hi, everybody. I want to welcome you to the online Family Intervention Strategies class. My name is Glenn Killian, and I'm the instructor for this class. And I know for many of you, this may be your first time taking a class with me. Others of you are returning students, and you've had other classes with me. Either way, I just want to say welcome to you. I'm glad that you've enrolled in this great class. And uh, I wanted to just post an orientation video here at the start of the class just to make sure that we highlight a few things and that we all get off on the right foot. And uh, I want to encourage you, if you've not already done so, to go and find the course syllabus uh, that I posted for you in class. Let me show you a picture. It looks basically, mine copy looks just like that. And uh, you'll find a copy of two different versions of the syllabus. And as is the case in every class that you take in college, you know, the syllabus is really just the guide. Um, for the entire class for the semester. It doesn't matter if it's a face-to-face -face class, if it's an online class, but I have found that it's especially important if you've not taken many online classes, the syllabus is especially important in an online class because you want to make sure that you just kind of get a feel for how the class is set up, obviously, the idea of the, the assignments that are going to be due, the due dates, all that kind of stuff, in addition to kind of looking around the classroom and seeing how things are set up. So yeah, I know many of you have taken many online classes and by now you're used to all that but some of you may be new and I want to just kind of highlight that important thing of looking for and looking at the course syllabus and what I want to do in this video very very quickly it won't take very long at all is to highlight several things key things about the class and also too some things I want to highlight and reinforce some things that you're going to see basically in the syllabus so many times students will ask me for this class um, Professor Killian what is the class about and the title of the class, I think, gives you a pretty good idea that this class is about families. And really the idea of working with families from a human services perspective. And you know if you've been in other classes with us that the term human services is a really broad term that encompasses things like casework and advocacy, behavioral health, counseling or therapy, social work, those kind of things. So we work a lot with families in the human services or social services field in a variety of different ways. Sometimes we do case management with them. Sometimes we're doing family counseling with them. Other times we're providing case management or assessment for those families. But families are, of course, central to our society and they're central to the work that we do in social services in many, many ways. And we're going to talk about that actually in module number one, which starts next week. And so uh, we have this as a class that's required for many of you a basic family systems or family counseling class. We call it family intervention strategies. I say this about many of my classes. If you've been with me in classes before, you heard me say this, uh, but this is definitely the case with this class. I love teaching this class. Uh, one of the things, if you've heard my story before, but kind of, a, kind of my background, how I got into the field, how I became a professor, was when I got into the field when I was in your shoes and I was in college, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But I was fascinated by families, maybe because of my own family, maybe because of my understanding of human behavior or my interest there or whatever it may be. I was really interested in families and kind of saw myself in my, in my mind's eye as a student doing like family counseling with at-risk teens and that kind of thing. And I was really, really fortunate that when I did my clinical practicum as a part of my master's degree, that's what I did. I worked in an agency where we worked with families and we were doing crisis intervention and in-home case management. And I kind of got a feel and kind of a, a passion for the ins and outs of family counseling. I eventually became licensed and then and did a lot of mental health counseling and also some family counseling as well too. So this is a great foundational class to take at the associate or certificate level, like that's what you're studying, uh, in, a, in a program like Human Services. And there's no way, as is the case in many of our classes, there's really no way in one semester that we can cover everything related to families. We could have five or six or seven different classes on just family dynamics and family support and strengths and counseling and how our family experiences influence us in positive or not so positive ways, um, parenting, uh, working with kids, working with kids with behavioral issues, all that kind of stuff, culture, ethnicity, nationality, how all of that influences our families and how our families oftentimes are at play, at play in shaping us 
in helping us to understand and learn to nurture us. And we work with families on all kinds of levels in human services, as you can imagine, as you already know. So that's what this class is about. My goal in this class, as is the class in all my, as is the case in all my classes, is I just want to give you just a basic overview of just family, what we call family work in social services. And so if you get the syllabus, like we just talked about, you're going to see uh, how we have the class kind of set up. So we kind of talk about how the class is set up, and then that'll also too explain kind of what we're going to talk about in class. So you'll see, if you look on the second page of the syllabus, that there are six modules total. Um, there's an opening week module, which is open right now, this first week of class that lasts for one week. And then after that, are five modules that are open for two weeks. And we operate in my online classes almost always on a Monday to Monday kind of operation. Things open on a Monday morning, they close at the end of the day on a Sunday, the new thing opens on Monday morning. So that's the case in this class. The first module called the opening week module is very basic. You have a discussion question you need to complete. I want you to use this first week to get your textbook. I'll talk more about that here in a second to make sure that you kind of get oriented with the syllabus and with the class and that you share a little bit of information with us about yourself on the discussion board just for this one week module, the opening week module. And then starting next week, you'll have two weeks to complete five different modules and we'll take them one at a time, so it's basically 10 weeks. And uh, you'll see on those modules that first thing we're gonna do in module number one is just lay some foundations of just family work and family dynamics and that kind of thing. Then, there are three specific family counseling theories or approaches that I always highlight in this class. Many of you have been with me or other professors in your counseling theories class, DAC 1311. So there's another class that you take called counseling theories, where we talk about different helping approaches like psychoanalytic theory and cognitive behavior theory and person-centered theory and Adlerian and reality, all those different helping approaches or theories that have been developed for us that can be beneficial for us as helpers to help understand how we can best help our clients. And that's what a theory is. Well, there are also, too, in addition to all those general theories, over the years, people have developed specific family counseling theories, theories that are specific to how do we understand families and how do we best approach counseling people or working with families as a whole. And there's a number of different theories and approaches that through the years people have developed around work with families. And we're going to cover three of them. Now there's many more than three, but there are three kind of foundational theories. Family systems theory, um, multi-generational family theory, and structural family theory. So if you look on the syllabus on page two, modules two, three, and four, we cover those three theories. So what you're gonna do, for example, in module number, number two, which is family systems theory, is you'll see as you go through the module that I've got some PowerPoint slides posted for you. I got a little lecture video like this, maybe a couple of lecture videos like this, where I kind of overview and give you kind of a verbal description of what the theory sort of proposes and teaches. I give you some written lecture notes. There are some videos off of YouTube. Um, there's all kinds of handouts and case studies, all kinds of stuff in every single module. And you've got for this class two weeks to basically work through all of that information, read your textbook, um, review the PowerPoint slides, review the lecture videos. And with every single module, at the end of the module, you have two things to do. You have a written homework assignment, about 15 or 16 questions, and you have a quiz. So you're gonna do um, five of those, five homework assignments and five quizzes because there's five modules. So nothing this week as far as homework assignment or quiz, but starting next week with module one, you're gonna have two things that you're gonna be responsible for doing in the family foundations module, the very first module that we do. And you'll get the hang of that very, very quickly. You got plenty of time, you got two weeks with each, with each module. And then along the way, also too, with a couple of the modules, modules two, modules, let me get them straight, modules three, and, excuse me, modules two and modules three, um, you have additional, you have, you have an additional homework assignment to do with those modules. You have what's called the genogram assignment that goes with multi-generational family counseling. You have a family roles case study that goes with family systems three, module number two. So all of that's in the syllabus. 
all of that's in the classroom. Just make sure you have the dates down and you're getting the dates for those things down. Get them in your calendar and you're aware of all of the dates that are there. In addition to all of that, then towards the middle end of the semester, you have two written assignments that you'll do. The first is an autobiography, self-reflection, family reflection paper. I've got actually a video posted for you that whenever that whenever I release that assignment for you, I've got a little intro video as to kind of describing what is that assignment. You'll do that towards the end of the semester. And then you're also gonna do a final exam project, which is a PowerPoint presentation in December. So a couple of written assignments towards the end, five modules plus an opening week module, homework assignments, quizzes, a genogram assignment, a family roles, case study, and all of that's outlined for you both inside the classroom and also on the syllabus. So that's kind of the work you're going to be doing. All of it is sort of related to this idea of working with families. My goal is by the time you graduate from this class at the end of the semester, that you have to have a good foundation and basic understanding of just sort of a social services perspective of families and family systems, basically. So I want to kind of I want to kind of circle back if I can before I turn the video off and talk about a couple of things related to something I just talked about. So let's talk about homework and quizzes. Five homework assignments to go with the five modules and five quizzes. So let's talk about homework first. So first, so there's two things I want to highlight for you for homework. Number one. If, you, if you've already gotten into the class and looked around, you're gonna need the textbook to do the homework because every single homework assignment has questions out of the textbook. So our textbook is this purple book called Introduction to Family Counseling, kind of makes sense. A great, basic, practical family counseling textbook. I like this book. We've used other books through the years in this class. This is the one that I like for different reasons. Let me, let me tell you one of the reasons why I like this book. Number one, it's very simple to read and it's very practical. It gives some, it gives some specific examples of, of some of the things we're gonna be talking about in every single module. And so I like it for that reason. I also like too how, and you, if, you, if you've already got the book and you've looked at it, in chapter number one, they, the authors give you a hypothetical family, a family that they just kind of made up. It's got a mom and a dad and they're remarried. And it's a blended family. And, they got teenagers and they got a young kid and one of the kids got some developmental behavioral issues and maybe maybe one of the kids has a substance abuse concern and, and mom and the dad are kind of ar whatever arguing. So it's kind of a typical family counseling presentation. So they give you sort of an overview of this hypothetical family. And then what they do in every single chapter is they describe, for example, in one of the chapters, they talk about family systems theory, which we're going to talk about in module number two. And then what they do at the end of that chapter is they kind of describe to you how would family systems theory approach the hypothetical family. So family systems theory says, for example, that all families naturally find a sense of homeostasis or balance. Uh, the idea that we fall into patterns naturally in relationships, even patterns that are not healthy. In fact, a lot of patterns that our relationships are not healthy. You know that from other classes. But we find this status quo in all relationships. Part of human nature is we look for consistency and we naturally fall into homeostasis or balance or equilibrium. And sometimes we do that in unhealthy ways. That's one of the core ideas at a family systems theory that we're gonna talk about in the lecture video and the lecture notes. And they talk about it in the textbook as well too. So one of the things that they'll highlight for you at the end of that chapter is where do we see that in this case? And they sort of highlight it for you. Here's a good example of what we mean when we say homeostasis. Notice how mom and dad are in this pattern of relating. Neither one of them is happy. Neither one of them likes it, but they keep doing it. There's that repeated pattern of behavior because people know oftentimes they need to do something different, but they don't. And so that's, that, that's one of the core ideas out of family systems theory is that families oftentimes get in patterns of unhealthy behavior that's hard for them to break. It's natural and normal, it becomes normal for them. And so as counselors, we have to help them to see those patterns and begin to try to break those patterns, realizing that it's not easy to break those patterns. And that sometimes as helpers, when we try to help families break, not, not just families, clients break unhealthy patterns, we get what's called pushback. And pushback is just resistance. People oftentimes resist 
even healthy change. So that, that, that's an idea that's central to family systems theory. That's just, that's just one idea we're going to talk about. And I like how in our textbook, the authors talk about that concept in their own words, and then they give you some examples from the case from chapter one. So that's part of why I use the textbook is because it has sort of that case study kind of feel. It, it, I like the way they describe all the concerns and how they connect it to this family. I've had lots of students through the years talk about how they like that about the book, that they were able to sort of follow this family from chapter to chapter to chapter. So you're going to need the book. Get an ebook if you want to, hard copy if you need to. You're going to need the textbook um, for the homework assignments. Let me also say something else about the homework assignments as well, too, and then something about the quizzes, and then we'll be done. So one of the things I want to highlight for you, you're going to see when you open your first homework assignment is just this. It's really simple, and I hope it's really simple for you to follow. When you do the five homework assignments, um, the answers to all of the questions that you give, all of your answers, should come from inside the classroom. And what I mean by that is every answer to every homework question, I give you the answers in the classroom through my lecture notes, the PowerPoint presentations, the videos, and or the textbook. And that's where your answers should come from. That's what I'm looking for. In other words, um, you should not go outside the classroom to get the answers. So in other words, just keep, keep it real simple, you shouldn't be using an AI platform or Google to answer the questions. I will, I will know that you are doing that because I, I know what, I, I wrote the questions and so I kind of know what answers I'm looking for and you've paid for this class, and a part of participating in this class is going and getting the information from the class and not from outside the classroom. So I wanna highlight that. That's kind of become an issue the last couple of years in most of our online classes, including mine. So I just wanna make sure that you're aware of that, that that's my expectation of the grading. You will not get credit or full credit for any, for any answer that doesn't come from within the classroom or the textbook, that's a part of just being a part of the class. So I wanna make sure you highlight that for you as well too. So that's homework assignments, there's five of those. And then you're also too gonna to do quizzes. There's five quizzes. Uh, the quizzes are open note and open book. So you should have no problem with them, but here's the thing for the quizzes. And again, some of you have been with me in uh, my other classes, so you know this. Uh, on the homework assignments, if you don't get something turned in on time, now you've got two weeks, so you've got plenty of time there should be no reason for you to turn something in late, but if you have to, you get a little bit of grace with the written work, the homework assignments. Um, I don't allow makeups if you miss a quiz. So you have to take the quizzes, all five of them, while they're open if you want to avoid a zero, because you're going to get a zero if for some reason you don't take the quiz while it's open. Once the quiz is closed, they're gone, basically. Okay. So for that reason, especially with the quizzes, you're gonna wanna make sure that on your calendar or however it is you organize yourself, we all have our system, right? Uh, make sure you're getting those quiz dates down. They're every two weeks. Once we get into the first module, every two weeks, you're gonna have a quiz for 10 weeks. The quiz is open at noon on one day and close at midnight on, on a couple of days later. So make sure that you're taking those quizzes while they're open um, because once they close, they go away. So, so I want to make sure to highlight that for you as well, too. So the issue of homework, need your textbook, make sure your answers are coming from inside the classroom, make sure you take the quizzes while they're open and while they're available. I hope that you have a great semester. You're going to be seeing me on videos like this all the way through the semester. My contact information is on the front page, page one of the syllabus. You can email me here in the classroom. Many, many students often do that. You can also call me in my office here at LSC Montgomery. You can email me through Lump through the through my Lone Star, however you need to, if you need to reach me. Um, I'm pretty good about being in the classroom every single day, looking and making sure things are going okay. Even though you may not see me all the time, I'm always kind of in there and hopefully always available for you. So just let me know if you need something. Glad you're in the class. Hope it's a great semester for you. I'll see you in the first module.